from the Oak Wall Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, this is Jesse Oakley III, and welcome to the Oak Zone Sunday Morning Chat Series. Here, I get to interview a plethora of positive people that are making a big difference in the community. Before we get started with our recording, I got to tell you that this is going to be one interesting but awesome episode that we have for you here today. Now, some of you may have heard about a certain event called Burning Man, and you hear so many interesting stories about this experience of this event that happens in Northern Nevada. Now, I have with me an aficionado on this wonderful event, and without any further delay, please help me welcome friend, Burning Man expert, and fellow Toastmaster, Mr. Bob Henze. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. All right, Bob. And without any further delay, let's chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, we've known each other for many years, and we've been involved yes. with a wonderful organization called Toastmasters. And how long have you actually been a part of this wonderful organization? Oh, it, it goes into the 90s. I think it was like right about 96, somebody invited me to uh, bachelors and bachelorettes way back then. Wow. And I was a guest for quite some time. And in the beginning when I did join, yes, I was the Wizard of Oz. Ah, cool. <laughs> now, that's how you got started. And who actually asked you to actually join this organization? Who, who actually invited you, officially invited you? Oh, jeez, uh, I think it was... Uh, a friend called, like, I think it was Kathy Haney, or uh, there were some uh, women that actually worked for the Small Business Administration ah. way back then. And uh, I don't know how we, it was, you know, it's 20 plus years. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, that's, uh, hey, that's all good, man. It's all good. Now, I've been to a couple of the Toastmasters meeting before. And there is one topic that I definitely wanted to discuss right here on the Sunday morning chat series, which is quite interesting, especially for those happy people out there that are watching this. I noticed that you are taking an interest in a certain event that happened out in the Northern Nevada desert. Uh, what, what is that type of event? Yes. Yeah, it's sort of a strange uh, how I got into that. Um, because, yeah, I'm, I used to work in aerospace, so I'm an engineer. Then I got laid off at the end of the Cold War and uh, actually got a job here working for the state of Nevada for gaming control. Ah. So we're like the CSI of the, of the casinos and all that. And, uh, and actually joining Toastmasters, there were some uh, young people that actually, you know, I don't know if they actually did a speech, but I remember talking to them and they talked about this event called Burning Man. Mm. Yeah, this was in the 90s. OK, um, and I, I had no clue about this. You know, I, I, I didn't really go to a lot of the big festivals, you know, you know, you know, Woodstock is a memory. You know, I, I didn't go, but, you know, we all, all know all the stories of that. And there were some big festivals in uh, California. Um, but yeah, once I heard about this, you know, I started, you know, that was, this was pretty much right at the beginning of, you know, all the social media yep. meetups and Facebook. So there really wasn't a lot of information out there about all these uh, parties. But yeah, then I joined a meetup and then I met some of these people, which, you know, the group that goes to Burning Man or that are, yeah, we're called burners. Ah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I went to a lot of these just little social get, you know, getting, they have a, like a weekly social just to discuss, you know, if they're going to build our projects or things like that. Okay. And that's basically how I got, you know, hauled into this being the engineer, you know, I, I lent, lent my skills and I actually learned a lot of skills learning, needing to, you know, build these things such as 
the thing behind you. <laughs> ah. uh, so yeah. And uh, so I started to go there and, you know, I've always been an avid camper. You mm -hmm. know, I had my own trailer and uh, yeah, the last year that I went was uh, 2019. That was, you know, it didn't happen for the last two years officially, but yeah. unofficially, yeah, the, there were still people that go down to that and just, just like a big camp out. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've worked on several big art projects all through in Vegas and, uh, going, having to go up there and build other things. Yeah. And then we also had a, some, uh, what they call regionals. They have a, oh. they're essentially what called mini burns. Okay. And one was called Forgotten City, which is the Las Vegas regional, which we used to have in a food Lake Canyon in Boulder city. Oh. And we actually outgrew that. And then to a private ranch up in uh, Beatty, um, I, I, it's, uh, and our regional there is called SNRG, Southern Nevada Regional Group. Ah. So it'll actually be coming up in a matter of weeks here because mm -hmm. we've kept, del you know, kept delaying it due to the, the pandemic. <sighs> I, I'll tell you, that, that's truly fascinating. And you mentioned about the start and how you got involved with this one organization or this group called the Burning Man, this, this interesting event. And when you think of, when people think of Burning Man, they think of some outrageous, something crazy, something out of the ordinary, something that certain happy people may have their hair stand up and on end. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> so what was some of the most interesting thing that you experienced within this Burning Man event? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, what the media portrays it, they, they tend to blow it up because, yes, it does. It is all those things that they say, sex, drugs, rock and roll, you know, nudity, all that. OK, but we're in the middle of the desert. Burning Man becomes pretty much be, roughly between the fourth or sixth largest city in Nevada for that week. and. Uh, and, you know, some of the things that my friends have said, it's almost like poetry. You know, and it's, it, it really, it, it is like, it's an adult Disneyland. Okay, when you go up there and, you know, you don't need to take drugs to feel, you can just walk around and watch all this stuff. And, and it's all lit up at night and all these fancy vehicles that people have built, you know, it's taken them months, years, either anywhere from, thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars to build this stuff just for that festival man and people come from across the world for that so Ooh. it is pretty crazy yeah uh, you're, you're telling me it's pretty crazy between burning man happening in northern nevada and the edc happening in southern nevada out by the racetrack in vegas Right. That, all the crowd, you have so many people, and you're right about being the sixth largest city in Nevada with that, that much humanity that's right there. And, and this is it just sort of blows people's minds that yep. you have these types of experiences happening in the state of Nevada. But I got to tell you, this is there's so many ways to actually get to get that Burning Man experience. And there's one person. That's probably looking at this video and wondering, you know what, 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 what could I actually go if I'm on the fence about joining Burning Man? Uh, what, what type of advice would you give this person about joining Burning Man? What, what type of heads up information would you like to give this person if they're interested in joining this type of event? Yeah, because you know there, you know there, there are what they call the, the ten principles of Burning Man. And I almost see them as almost like the, the Ten Commandments. Ah. Okay. Because I can, yeah, I can, you know, I, I see them like, oh, yeah, this one and this one, you know. But it's actually about, you know, Burning Man started on a beach in San Francisco and near Berkeley. Hmm. Okay. And it was just a grand gathering of people. And every year it got bigger and bigger until, of course, the, you know, the, the Rangers had to kick them out because it was, you know, thousands of people on the beach and yeah. Yeah. 
and so they had to move to, you know, the, the Black Rock uh, Desert, which, you know, Burning Man is now called Black Rock City. If you actually type that into Google for Google Maps or whatever, it'll actually come up, you know. Really? You know, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so what it's ba basically for people that are, you know, open minded, but, you know, because, you know, I've, I've met several people that have gone one time and it's like, well, way too much for me. It's, it shatters my whole perception of reality. And, uh, but it, it, yeah, if, if you're, you know, if you, you know, you know, because I go, I'm a worker. Okay. You know, a lot of these projects that I've worked on, I work 12 hour days there for free as a volunteer. And I even have to spend my own money. Wow. Okay. So going there, yes, there are people that have gone there with pretty much nothing and have been supported throughout the whole vest because this is not a vending festival. You have to bring everything. Here. The only thing that's supplied now is like coffee, tea, some ice. Uh, everything else is supplied by the people. Ah. And there's some pretty fancy stuff. I mean... The stories I could tell you um, of the, the things people give away. I mean, one of the, the craziest ones is uh, uh, a few years ago that there was a bunch of small art projects that which they call effigies, and they're aligned around the man. See, the, the town is actually built sort of like a clock. Mm -hmm. it, it's got a big U shape. The center is where... The man is, yeah, you know, the, the great big structure that you'll see the, okay. And then behind it is actually a temple. Mm. And those stand for the entire week. But then on, uh, let's see, what is it? Yeah. On Saturday, they burn the man. Okay. And at, at first, it just used to be some hell bays and, you know, a man maybe 10, 20 feet. Mm -hmm. And now it's approaching, could be 100 feet or more. Oh, 100 yes. feet? Yes. Uh-huh. Man. Yeah. We're talking serious structures. I mean, uh, yeah. And some of this stuff takes months or if not, you know, basically recently, yeah, it's like as soon as Burning Man is done, you know, these people have to start in a project for next year. It takes mm. that long. <laughs> Man. Or their own money or, you know, sometimes they're, they're funding things. And it did take, you know, some of those projects cost a hundred thousand dollars or so for, you know, and it's all the people from Silicon Valley invest and go there from, you know, Google and Amazon and they set up their own little camps and, you know, we, you know, it's basically that then the, all the streets are lettered and all this stuff. And it, it is, you know, we have our own, we have our own hospital, post office and airport we create while we're there. Then it's all disassembled and let leave. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes. I, I, this so, is, that's amazing, man. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Let me get back to the one night. Okay. Go ahead. Go so ahead. A bunch of us just thought it's like, oh, hey, what are we doing? It's like, hey, we're going to just go walk out and we're going to look at some of the effigies. And, and it's like, oh, cool. You know, we look at all the different ones. And then we come up to this, this huge, uh, human-sized lobster trap, okay? You know, it's, it's human size. It's probably, I don't know, eight feet or tall. And, you know, it looks like it's, it's from the people from Maine that wow. came here, okay? And we're looking like, wow, that's, you know, but then we look over at someone and then somebody's cooking something and, and they're saying, hey, come on over and get some, uh, get some lobster. And it's like, and they've got these huge pans that they're actually creating. Wow. And, you know, a bunch of us said, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'll be ready in about 10 minutes. Okay, if you want, just want to ever wait around. It's like, we thought, okay, yeah, they'll, they'll probably just give us a claw or something like that. It's, yeah, and when they were done, no. They handed each of us a full lobster, okay? What? And they was, yeah, out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and, and we said, well, where did you get these? How did you? It's like, we have them flown in from Maine daily here. Whoa. Hey, wait, a minute. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hit the reverse button. <laughs> Hit the play. You know, you said daily. 
Daily. From Maine over to yes. the Black Rock Desert in the city in Nevada? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Did yeah. it, at least, did it at least also add the butter, too? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah, that was like the wildest night. It's like, oh, yeah, we're in the middle of the desert. There's not water for God knows 100 miles or so, you know. <laughs> and, yeah, man. that was one of the craziest ones. And then. Yeah. Then when that's all done, they, they burned the effigy, they burned their lobster trap and then cleaned up and we all go our separate ways, you know, back to our real job. But what we call when the burning man is done, that we have to go back to the default world. Oh, where, wow. Where, yeah, when people talk about burning man, it's like, hey, are you going home? Meaning going to burning man. And it's like, oh, it's all over. We have to go back to the default world and go back to our default jobs and, you know, make money so we can spend it for next year. Because, you know, a lot of these trips are not cheap. Even when you're hauling a trailer and you have to haul, haul your own water, your food, and you have to have supplies for a week to be out there. And most of my trips are, you know, because I, I have to get there early to help set up camp. And then... You know, last few years I would go go to Reno because there's after parties in Reno okay. for like the next few days. So I I get an RV spot at the Grand Sierra, and we actually yep. get there and we can actually take a a real shower, okay? And, and we clean everything and we dump the trailers and you know we organize stuff and yeah because the the sand in there it, it's a it's an alkaline lake bed. And okay. the, fan, the sand is super fine and it has a very distinct smell because we, yeah, if we just walk by somebody when we're back here, we know exactly that smell. Yep. And then, and you, you, you know, and once a vehicle goes, it, there really is never a, a way to get rid of all that. You know, I mean, because I generally have to wash my trailer three times just to look, have it to look. Decent. I have to spend a whole day cleaning the insides and out, even the sealed areas. <laughs> My goodness. You should say three times you have to wash that thing? Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, when I leave Burning Man, I stop, get a, uh, get a you know, a, a do-it-yourself car wash. Just okay. to get. Then when I get home, I have to get a, one of those, uh, you know, uh, water brushes that, you know, are the big brush at the end. And then after that, then you do a hand wash on top of that. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Especially <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> man, my goodness. I'm just like, you just you had me a lobster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's just yeah. <laughs> and there's, yeah, there's so many different stories like there. There's one called uh, Dust City Diner, where actually somebody built this trailer and it looks like a retro 50s diner. Oh, you sit up. And it's got the round stools. It's got all that stuff. And he actually, you know, he just moves it around the city. And, uh, you know, they have a full fancy menu of everything. But all they serve is grilled cheese sandwiches. Because, yeah, and they've got all the, the pretty waitresses like, oh, what would you like? And you say, oh, yeah, I want this, this, and this. And they'll just give you like a, here's a grilled cheese, grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've done that several times. Yeah, because what one of my favorite things to do in the morning will be just about sunrise. I would take my bicycle and I would run what they call the 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 trash fence, which is basically it's just a fence that encirculates the town okay. it's several miles long, and it's like some of the art and all the stuff that you see out there is like. Is, you know, beyond comparison of, I mean, I could, you know, because when I first started going to Burning or pre Burning Man, you know, people would that have gone is like, they would tell you stories for hours and show you videos on their TV. And, you know, you'd go through a thousand photos that they showed, but it's really nothing until you get there. Exactly. You, you once you get once you get at that gate and you start looking around and then you're there for the next you know day or so is like yeah but then yeah 
All right. And this it is an interesting experience, especially going to Burning Man. And I just can't yeah, I'm sure you have a whole more story to tell, but this here, just those stories alone, that makes you <laughs> want to just even check it out and be more intrigued about what this event is all about. And now, how can more people do more research or information about Burning Man? Well, where could they go? Um, there, yeah, there are Facebook group, group, uh, groups, <laughs> you know, about Burning Man. And on YouTube, they're, you know, you just type in Burning Man, they're just hours and hours and hours and hours of... Uh, and I also have my own YouTube channel that have all my small little video clips from all my adventures of Toastmasters, of Burning Man, of all my different travels. And I actually, whenever I go, when I'm at the end, I've, I've been giving a speech about Burning Man every every year. Okay. So, yeah. And then I've, yeah, I've had so many people that you think are, yeah, you know, just totally straight, totally, you know, and they just think it's like, you know, I have a little photo presentation and they're just like, mm. yeah, and they're all just blown away. But to do it right, it, it is expensive. So expect to spend at least, you know, one to two thousand dollars just to go there. Because, yeah, right. the tickets, tickets alone are roughly five hundred dollars. And those are general admission. That doesn't include anything. It just says you're allowed to be here for the week. Okay. Okay. Then you have, you know, your, your, your fuel for your gas and you need to have your water and you need to have your supplies and, you know, bring your bicycles. Cause once, once you are there, your standard vehicles are not allowed to move until the end of the, the festival, mm. which is why they have what they call art cars. Okay. Which is what you you've seen them, you're, you've seen them downtown. Some of you know the EDCs, the yeah. Life is Beautiful, all that. I have friends that have them, and every so often we actually bring them out. And I've I've driven our little fish car hmm. on the Las Vegas streets. I mean, we've passed by police, and we've we've taken them out for Halloween's, uh, and everybody's just like, you know, just wild about it. So. Uh, my goodness. Yeah. My goodness. Now, don't for people that missed that, do not fret. I will put Bob's link to his YouTube page in the description below so you can know more about Burning Man and see some Burning Man experiences. And again, it will be right there, right below. So once you're done watching this interesting interview, you just go to Bob's information, which will be right below, right, right there. Right, Bob? Yep. We'll put it down there and yeah. Yeah, because yeah, if we're gonna do a close, let me talk tell you about the photo behind me. Go ahead. Do okay, it. yeah. Because yeah, this project is called uh Reflect. Okay. And what it was is uh it was an octagon of uh, eight different size and the different colors of the chakra. And I did uh all the all the we had like twelve thousand LEDs that actually turned like into a, a rainbow waterfall. Okay. Okay, and then at the end of the festival, of course. We had to take all our stuff down and and we burned that, such as, and if you see me in my, uh, oops, let me see, you're right here, yeah. That yeah. is me in my camos right there. I'm doing Ooh. the I'm doing the perimeter watch, make sure that sometimes people all around us do want to just, you know, run in and they're, you know, you know we don't let them get into the fire zone because it's, yeah, it's, it's a yeah. whole procedure of Burning Man is like, no, you have to have perimeter, you have to have people that guard that, you need you need to have your fire tenders, you know. And I I've done fire tending for a lot of these projects where it, you know, basically it's it's a thousand or more degrees where you have to just step in, break, and then step away. And it almost feels like you're even fully clothed like I am there. Okay. It's like it's hot. It's it, it's like you have a sunburn. You know, just for like those mere seconds. <laughs> oh, whoa. Yeah. Oh, man. And we have got some great video of uh, of all this, of when that tower actually falls. And yeah, so. I, I tell you what, <laughs> and the link will be right there, right below. You, you will not miss this wonderful opportunity. And I tell you what, time flies when you're having a whole lot of fun, Bob. And 
I got to now we're at a portion of the interview, which is called a shout out portion. Now, is there anyone out there that you'd like to give a shout out to for this interesting experience? Yeah. Um, all my, all my burner friends, which are, you know, just in Vegas alone is probably a good hundred people or so. Hmm. And we are actually building a few projects right now. If you've been watching my Facebook page, there's a, uh, there's a pyramid that I'm building for a friend who's a, uh, who's a, uh, he does uh, a lot of uh, mystic stuff or, uh, and yoga. Yeah. So we're actually, yeah, uh, we're, you know, we're doing a lot of metal forming and cutting and it's going to be covered in tarp. And then I'll also, and there's another one called, uh, I was just at last night and uh, this lady is building a, a 16 foot structure it's, mm. it's you know it's it's uh, gonna be the size of like a re- regular bedroom, and, really? it, and it but it's all just scrap wood, and it's gonna look like a giant shark as it goes up. Okay, it's it's gonna be sixteen feet tall. And has, and I'm doing some of the lighting design for that. Uh, so yeah, it's crazy Man. stuff. <laughs> Man. That that is truly crazy, and I tell you what, that is quite the experience, especially here with this Burning Man event. Now, there are so many people out there, my crew, which is called the happy people, they are minds blown back. They're just saying, wow, all this can happen at Burning Man. And they also are inspired. They're also amazed with the information that so many people, so many guests on this podcast have shared. Now, if you can offer solid words of wisdom for my people, the happy people, with regards to either Toastmasters or Burning Man, what advice would you like to give to the happy people out there? Okay. Let me see. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, when I first moved to Vegas, you know, back in the 90s, okay. yeah, it was basically culturally void. Okay. It was either casinos, you had a few movie theaters, but there really wasn't a lot of culture. Okay. But now... As some of the people, if you if you look around and all the artwork that you do see now, yes. downtown, at the T-Mobile Plaza, yep. you know the the giant lady, mm-hmm. the 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 diesel trucks downtown. Yeah. Even if you remember the Life Cube, oh yeah, downtown, that is all from Burning Man. Hmm. Okay. And if you look at when when life is beautiful. Yep. Most of the artwork that they do is from past years of Burning Man. Oh. Yes. Because, yeah, I've been through Life is Beautiful. I'm starting to look. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember, and all the different things that they move through downtown and through the big. That is all created as projects from Burning Man. So if you're, if you're happy people, have skills, or want to be more cultural aware, you know, you know, a lot of times, you know, if you see that structure and you ask somebody around there, you know, somebody will, somebody's probably going to be there. It's like, oh, yeah, here's the story behind that. Okay. You know, and there's a lot of people from, uh, there's a, there's, you know, in San Francisco, there's people, you know, groups called uh, Flaming Lotus Girls, and they have these old abandoned, uh, uh, warehouses that they converted into workshops oh. and it's like they do major art art so if you see a lot of the major art from edc or life is beautiful or any of the different you know if you see a art car rally or especially during a, a halloween those are all basically created through our crazy little minds <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. And it goes to show you that it takes a little bit of imagination, a little creativity. And it also, you'd be surprised with what can happen within one's mind. And this just makes the mind and creativity can just take it beyond people's imagination. And if you had a creativity, happy people, boom, you have something right there. Because without it, you just have dullness. You'll have boredom. You'll have just a monotone type of life because it, it it pays to have creativity. Wouldn't you agree, Bob? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, being the engineer, I was always the logical rationale, you know, 
you know, but then, you know, actually going to Toastmasters, then learning about this stuff is like, you know, yeah, we have the eccentric artist out there, which, you know, they're in one side of their mind where the engineers are in the other side of the mind. But those artists need to have the physics and the engineering to create that stuff because, yes, I've argued way too many times with artists saying, oh, you want to design this. So, and yeah, we, I wanted to do this. It's like, oh, so you're, you're saying that you want to rewrite physics for your project to work. Ah. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> We're going to have to do it this way. <laughs> they go, oh, okay, yeah. It's like, yeah. So yeah, that's the, the blend of, we need to have the, the construction people, the engineers, the artists that just come up with these things. And it's like, oh yeah, that is a cool thing. But how are we going to do that? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I, t- <laughs> I tell you, being, being a fellow engineer myself in the engineering field, I could totally relate to the structure on one end and the creativity on the other end. But if you get them to working together, whoo, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Now, mm-hmm. Bob, I got to tell you, this has been quite the experience I taught having here on the Oak Zone Sunday Morning Chat Series. And on behalf of all the happy people that are watching, I want to thank you for taking part and sharing your experiences within Burning Man, how, how I got started and everything else and the different stories. And I'm still stuck at the lobster part. <laughs> So again, I want to thank you for actually taking the time out to be here on the Sunday morning chat series, my man. Thanks. Thank you. It's been a very, very good experience. All right. And uh, this concludes this episode of the Oak Zone Sunday morning chat series. If you want more plethora of positivity, all you need to do is go to YouTube, type my name, Jesse Oakley III, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, like, comment, and share these videos with other happy people that you know. And once you get to my YouTube channel, Click on to the link of Sunday morning chat series where you get a chance to see me interview past guests on a channel with some amazing stories and how they make a big difference in the community like my friend Bob right here. And this concludes this episode of the Sunday morning chat series. Until next time, happy, happy people. You take care and have a great day. Bye.